everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an Xbox One X series and in this video I'm going to take you over how you can open it up and how you can clean up the Xbox inside if yours is running a little bit hot or is getting some random shutdowns it's good to open it up and every few years or every year I'll recommend depending the usage that you give daily to do a repaste and cleaning of the whole system if you don't want to repaste you just want to clean it I'm gonna cover in this video how you can just clean it without removing the heat sink. Okay, but the repaste you should do it every few years. I made a video how to repaste, but in this video I'm just gonna keep it short. And uh, for those people that say can I do it without removing the heat sink, sure you can. And I'm gonna cover that in this video. So first thing first, let's go ahead and go over the tools that I'll be using. And I fixed the screwdriver set. That's a really good tool I would recommend for everybody. You're gonna be using a screwdriver set and some sort of alcohol isopropolic and air compressed air. I'll leave the link for a good air compressed air in case you want to get yours. I'll recommend you guys to grab some tweezers, curved tweezers or straight tweezers and some workshop towel. One sheet of the workshop towel, that should be good enough. And an old or used toothbrush that you should have. Uh, with all this on hand, we're gonna get it started. First thing first, we're gonna look for that torque number eight. Uh, this is torque 10, let me see torque 10 work. Yeah, torque number 10. So get torque number 10 and remove the screw at the back on the corner. All right, once you remove the screw, there's one more screw on this side. You can use a tweezer to just lift it up. It looks like somebody already tampered with this one, but let's see what happens. I think they tried to open it before. Once you remove the screws from here, and it should be pretty easy. All you need to do is put it forward and slide the top portion toward the front end of the console. And all you want to do, then once it's loose right there, you want to bring the, the side with, where the power jack is upward. Um, like this and then you just want to slide it wiggle around and it will release itself from the back side so there's the dust right there and we're going to take it outside use a toothbrush even this portion you can even wash it out and leave it out for drying all right down here we can see it is kind of dusty everywhere here so we're going to start removing first we're going to remove this port here this is a usb port this one is a torque number nine. Grab a torque number nine and remove the two screws for this USB port. Okay. And you just wanna put your finger underneath or spatula underneath and just lift it up and pull it to one side. Don't bend it too much. Now we're gonna remove the screws that they are really flat on the top that these are the round ones but these ones are kind of flat so we're going to remove the flat ones there should be one right let's switch back to torque number 10. this one right there the one in the middle uh, over here And the one right back here. There should be a total of six screws that you should remove, six of them. Once you remove them, now we're gonna grab the DVD drive. Like, uh, let me see. We wanna go ahead and lift up this lock right here. We're gonna lift up 90 degree, like that. And we're gonna slide back the flex cable, just Gently work it around, it will release itself. Once you have that one released, let me see anything else. And there's a really, really dusty in here. Okay, we're gonna put it face down, lift it from the back side, and bring it forward. And there's the other side. So we're gonna take it outside and clean it too. Now, down here, we're gonna remove this screw right here.
and they screw right over here. You want to lift up the cover gently. The DVD drive should stay there. And bring the cover. Again, take the cover outside, use a toothbrush to clean it up. And it looks like this client had a little cat or dog. So you're going to lift up this one back forward, the DVD drive. And there's a little adhesive in here for the power supply. So you can peel it off or you can just cut it with a cutter. Separate it right there. We'll remove the adhesive. Remove this one. Now we need to loosen up this power supply right here. So I'm going to put it back down. I'm going to put my workshop right down there. And we are going to remove the screws for this power supply, which is this one and this one right in here. It's pretty tough. Alright, once you remove these three screws, now this power supply should come out pretty easy up. Let me see what else is holding it. There's something holding in here. I think I missed one screw that I have to remove. No, I have not missed. But what I'm going to do, remove, I'm going to remove all the screws at the bottom so we can remove the chassis completely. So let's put it down. So we need to clean up the hard drive. So let's go ahead and remove the rest of the screws quickly. Because we do want to remove the power supply and clean it up. And also the hard drive should be clean. Alright, now that we remove all the screws, you don't want to remove this X clamp right in here, the screws. That you don't want to leave it on. Okay, now we should be able to lift up everything in here. So lift up the power supply, pull it up, untangle the cables right there, pull up the SATA connector and the power connector for the DVD drive. You can take it out and clean it. The power connector for the hard drive and the SATA for the hard drive. Again, they do need cleaning, so it is pretty dusty. Just don't drop it. Disconnect the power connector for the fan, lift it up, and there you can see all this hair accumulated. So you can just take it outside, blow some dry air, and clean it with a toothbrush as much as you can. And remove the connector for the power supply. You don't need this for thing. And you can see all this dust in the heat sink. So you can clean as much as you can with a toothbrush and blow some dry air, compressed air. Do not use those can air, use a dry compressed air. I'll leave the link in the video description. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna clean it up with a toothbrush and compressed air, and I'll be back right after this. All right. Now that I took it outside and I cleaned it up, I cleaned up the heatsink without removing the heatsink. I left everything okay the way it is, so I didn't want to remove the X clamp right in here. So without removing the heatsink, right, we just cleaned it up nicely. We blow some air through here, the motherboard and everything else, and it was pretty good. All right, next, 
uh, clean up the hard drive you gotta clean up make sure you don't cover this hole there's no dust in this hole it said do not cover once you finish cleaning it up put it in place uh, connect the SATA connector which is this one and the power jack put it right on there next you want to grab the DVD drive before that let's grab the fan that we cleaned already which is right over here so once you clean up the fan bring it down put the fan connector down first it's easier this way and then bring down the housing and set it down right on top right there let me just double check make sure everything is in place there we go okay next we are going to go ahead and grab the power unit before we put the oh, before putting the housing in we have to put the power in so let's go ahead and lift it up put the power jack right in the corner just it has to go snugly right in there in its place once it's in there now we're gonna put down this uh, tangle the cables right through there grab the dvd drive grab the dvd drive and put the SATA connector and the power connector right there and bring it with an offset position and now we want to put this hole goes through here so you have to push it down kind of hard align it once it's aligned push it in this corner and it should go in place run the cable make sure all these cables are nice and snuggle there put the hook right through here and put the dvd drive right on top yes okay now that one is in place we are going to put the top portion on top so bring it straight over wiggle it around a little bit and it should go right in its place once it's in there now we're going to sandwich it back down flip it upside down we're going to put all the screws except the long ones first let's go ahead and put the short one and that should be all for this side this screw comes from the other side now what we need to do we want to put the housing in so grab the side that you cleaned up i did clean it up but not thoroughly so i'm just going to grab a little towel in here to do a better job you can do your own cleaning the way that you like it up to your likings now we want to set this one in a position that we have the cables sticking out and we want to go just about like this and i like to put it in an offset position just like that i need to stick this side a little more down There we go. Now what are we gonna do first? I'm gonna open up and we're gonna stick the flex cable right into the jack. Open up the lock for the jack. Stick this flipping 90 degree up. And push. I'm gonna use a tweezers. Hold it and lock it down. Now we can actually put the rest in there. Grab this USB port, just snap it right on top. You have to align it, put it right in there. Put the two screws for this one. I believe this were torque number, 
Also, if you wanted to put this uh, foam thing on top of the table on the power supply, you, you could. But there is absolutely no reason for this one. It's not going to do any grounding or anything like that. It's absolutely not necessary. But if you want, you can put it in. I don't put it because it's not as sticky anymore. So you can just move around and go to the fan. So I'll just leave it out. There's no benefit for it to be in there. And opposite of the benefit, it could jam the fan or move into the fan. You could replace this one with a gaffer's tape, but again, that cable is not gonna move anywhere. It stay there for a long time. You're gonna put the longest screws. Also, if you guys like my video, if my video helped you guys out, you can click and support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. All right, once we finish with this one here, we want to grab the bottom cover. We're going to first put this end where the, the Xbox information is. You're gonna put it in an offset position right in the case. Just kind of like a drawer in there. And with an offset position, we're gonna bring it down, stick it there and push it towards the back end. And that should be off. There's no forcing or anything like that. The last thing down here will be to put the back two screws and that should be all for today's video. Again, if you guys have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in the video comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just gonna put the screw and do some cleaning from exterior.